Hi guys and welcome back to MCK series. In today's video, I'll be talking about bride price versus marriage list. There has been several controversies concerning two topic, these two topics. Some people keep saying that Igbo traditional marriage is very expensive. So today I will throw more light on it for us to understand very well what these two topics mean as it concerns Igbo traditional marriage. I get into this video, I would like you to know I'm from southeastern part of Nigeria and Igbo traditional rights depend on the different localities. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for your support. If you are new to this channel, you might consider subscribing by clicking on the red button on your right which says subscribe. Also hit the bell icon, that way you get notification whenever I upload a new video and follow us on all our social media handles. There are several misconceptions about bright prize in African culture. In recent times, there have been several questions on the importance of bright prize. Some schools of thought believe that bright prize portrays women folk as commodities, therefore should be abolished. It is obvious that some illiterate and literate men seem not to understand the significance of bright prize in our culture, thereby abusing their wives saying how they own them because they have paid their bright prize. Any man that uses bride price as a reason to abuse his wife is only promoting slavery and irresponsibility. At this point, there is need to practice this symbolic tradition properly rather than getting it twisted because human beings are priceless. Therefore, no man can afford the price of a woman. In Igbo culture, no matter the amount of bride price paid by the groom, it is considered to only be a path which is required for the marriage while the remaining part is expected to be fulfilled at the death of his wife. It is believed that one cannot finish paying for a wife, and there is an Igbo adage that says, I've also read a lot of write-ups accusing Igbo people of high bright price, but I would like to let you know that there is difference between bright price and marriage list. Bearing in mind that bright price varies across Igbo land, but it is not as expensive as social media is portraying it to be. Most people tend to confuse these two different things thereby yeah, making a costly assumption that marrying in Igbo land is very expensive. Normally, bride price is a token that groom-to-be gives to his prospective in-laws as an estimation of the value of his intended bride, which can be in monetary or in material form. In the olden days, it used to be carry shells because that was the legal tender then, but now people prefer cash, but that's only symbolic anyway. Honestly, the problem I have is with the marriage list because some families tend to inflate it including frivolities and unimportant items there. The basic items you can find on this list include cakes of palm wine, cola nuts, hot drinks, cartons of beer, heads of tobacco, tubas of yam, cartons of soft drinks, and more drinks. In some towns, you can find expensive items such as Hollandese wrapper for Omugwa, gold, chieftaincy wear for the bride's father, and different uh, gifts for several groups, including Omona, which are kinsmen, Ndi Munye, the women married into the bride's kindred, Omoada, kindred's daughter of the bride's family. At this point, I tend to wonder the role these groups play in the in the bride's life. In my area, there is also what is called Iduno, known as dowry in English. There are lots of confusion between the bride price and dowry. Some people use the two words interchangeably. However, dowry is a duty families owe their daughter in Igbo land. It is a gift from the bride's family to the bride towards setting up her own home. Based on their pockets, it can be in terms of money, household items, jewelry, furniture, domestic animals, and some rich family can go as far as buying a car or a plot of land for their daughter. The custom of paying bride price is widely practiced all over African countries, although the tradition vary. In South Africa, it is known as lobola and can be presented either in money or cows, or both. It confirms the validity of traditional marriage because without payment of the bride price, a marriage is considered invalid. A couple is said to be unmarried until the man pays for the lady's bride price, even when they are already living together. Most often, the children from that kind of marriage in which bride price was not paid are classified as children got out of wedlock. Therefore, belongs to the woman's family and the man has no traditional rights over them. It sometimes serves as a prerequisite for church and civil marriages, such as in Kenya and Nigeria. It is a symbolic act rather than about buying the wife, as some people see it to be. The Kenyan constitution outlaws the obligation to pay a bride price, but it's widely understood that it will be paid. Today, some people perceive bride price to be an enrichment scheme for the bride's family, leaving the newlywed couple in financial debt. It is also considered to give a man economic control over his wife, which puts her on a lower pedestal than the man. And I think because of these reasons, 
that people, some people are kicking against it. This lady from Zimbabwe says she wants bride price or lobola to be abolished because it is unconstitutional or for both parties to pay in order to offer women some dignity, that it brings about gender inequities and causes discrimination based on gender and sex. Yes. Our monetary presentation as bride price reinforces the negation and stereotypes that portrays it as commercial transaction. Therefore, it should be free from all form of extortion and monetary transaction, really, because this is a part of our culture that signifies an expression of love and respect for women. When a high bride price is paid, it becomes very difficult or impossible to return when there is an issue of abuse and can also subject a woman to be treated as a commodity. Bride price is a cultural practice that builds stronger family relations in some cases. The bride price makes a lady respect her husband and family. Divorce is highly frowned at in our African tradition, and the stigma that comes with it mostly affects women. Returning of bride price signifies a divorce, and without returning the bride price, the woman cannot be driven out of her husband's house. Also, when a marriage is ruptured and the bride price is not returned, even when the couples are no longer together, the woman is taken to still be the man's wife. I personally think it would be nice for general reorientation and sensitization on these topics for clarity and better understanding. I would like to know what you think about bright price leave your comments below and let's keep the conversation on before i end this video i would like you to listen to the novelist chimamanda adichie who is also from southeastern part of nigeria as she shares her own bright price experience but i, I remember feeling very convicted about it and i was i was so grumpy because they had to do the, the bright price ceremony but my father was very nice and he was like you have to do this so what was done was that they brought one couple, the old one couple coin, yeah. So no, ten couple. Sorry, sorry, ten. What, which, which one is the one that's brown? Yeah. So so the whole idea was that he said no, it has to be just a symbolic thing. We're not actually going to have an exchange of money because we're not selling anybody. I think these are ways to. Um, start to change it. In my opinion, I think we should just get rid of the whole idea of money. Because I think it just ruins things. It gives, it gives the, not just the husband, but the husband's family, if they're not good people, this feeling that uh, we paid now.